Good morning, millennials, and welcome back to the Toast Happy Monday, which should be, eh, but it ain't. And you're not listening to last week's episode because that's exactly how you started last Monday's episode. Did I? Happy Monday, it should be, eh, but it ain't because Jax is here. Oh my God, I guess like a pattern of mine is being overjoyed to see you. A pattern of yours is being consistent. I'm nothing, I'm not consistent. So I think that's a good thing, but no, today is... What's the date? I'm going to say April 17th. April 17th. Ding, ding. And Jackson and Claude are back together. Is it April 17th, 2021? Because it feels like it with Jackson and Claude back in the New York studio. Were we in this studio in 2021? I meant 2022. No, we were in this studio in 2021. It could be either. These years, they've just flown. <sighs> the days are long, but the years are short. It actually has been a really long time since we've been in New York podcasting together. Not since December. And, and I do I go, go back. back to December all the time. Okay, guys, Jax is back in studio. It's like no time has passed. Life is good. It's nothing's changed. We're still sisters. You live here. I don't live here, but we can pretend. I know. I'm just like, I feel like I'm cosplaying like back when I was truly happy. Oh. Yeah. That's beautiful, Turdy. Well, I'm happy to be here. It's exciting to be in New York. I know. And I'm excited to be back on the toast. I've really missed you guys. I really enjoyed your friends and family week. Some episodes I watched longer than others. Mm -hmm. But what's so crazy is my favorite part of the show, even when I'm doing the show, but especially as a viewer. Same. Is the time before the Fast Five. Same. And as a toaster from last week, like as a former toaster. Right, right. <laughs> giving FTE. Um, I think we need to expand on that segment of just like pre-Fast Five nonsense chat. Chit chat. I completely agree. When I go back home and like watch the episode of the day, I pretty much stop when the Fast Five starts. Like I, <laughs> I love to hear us catching up, and I'm curious. And I think people tune in. They, they used to tune in for the Fast Five. Now they tune in. I don't know what they're I tuning just in for. Say, we will never stop doing the Fast Ever. Five because the Fast Five is the reason why there's a show on days when we have nothing to right. do. Like the Fast Five keeps the show going Daily. round, and I don't want to slam it. No, me neither, because it's but important to us, and it's what we—it's the foundation in which we built this business. I just want to highlight some of our other amazing segments, and the segment where we just do nonsense chatter is always my favorite segment, especially like after a long weekend yep. with a guest host. Like I just really want to hear about them. I want to hear their dynamic with Turdy. Yeah. And that was my favorite part. Then I like saw the stories in the description. I was like, ugh. But I also don't know if that's because I'm like hate pop culture. Yeah, totally. You're kind of like a hater. Yeah. Have you been drinking a haterade? No, but I think I'm just really desensitized and overexposed to it. And sometimes the stories are not giving, but then every once in a while. Scandaval. There's the story of a century of a century, and that makes it all worth it. And it today, makes every week of watching that show, yeah, every day of doing the fact, you know, keeping up with these people for ten years, it makes it all worth it. And today, while we don't have like a knockdown, drag out story, we have really good stories because it was Coachella over the weekend. There was big scandal updates. You don't have to dread the fast five today. No, and then of course the the drama of the weekend was last night's Netflix fiasco yeah. which we did both watch the love is blind reunion we're going to talk about it but what we're going to talk about more is the netflix of it all the tech i mean the toast would never that's all i'll say yeah chris rock would never i thought that was interesting too we'll talk about that as well our first story is the netflix saga of last night's never-ending torture fest that was their attempt at a live reunion we shall discuss and then also just like content recap at the end yeah lots of books lots of tv was consumed by your girlies this yeah. weekend yeah so we will share and then i've gotten so many nice messages from everyone because i've been out for a couple shows with like an air of mystery with around an air you. of mystery and i still will explain when i'm ready I'm not ready to talk or share yet. I need a little more time, but I'm here and I'm podcast ready. So like, I still want to do the show and, and I'll get to it. I just, it's, today's not the day. I, totally just, I just need more time. Um, but I see all your messages and I really, I appreciate everyone's patience and just prayers and everyone is so sweet and I really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it too. We're so similar. What do you appreciate? I just appreciate everyone. I'm just like in an appreciative mood. Are you appreciative that they're like loving Turdy's family and friends? You know, I love family and friends. You know, it's like my time to shine. Yeah. But it's so much harder than doing just like the regular toast. Like one, being the stories and the ads girl. It's just like there's no room for Turdy to like express herself, you know? Yeah. And it's not the same, not podcasting with you. It's like we're so natural. We're just like, you know, we're like Japanese joinery. We just fit. <laughs> 
And I love getting to catch up with everyone. And I'm so appreciative for everyone who came last week. I literally had asked some people like three days notice and everybody really like moved stuff around. And I was really appreciative. And it was like really great guests, which is always good for the toast, growth, reaching new audiences. We love, we love. Um, but there's truly nothing like a Jackson Claude original recipe. And that's what we're here to deliver today. It's not delivery. It's Jackson Claude original recipe. Yum. But you know what? I kind of wish it was delivery. Afterward, what are we gonna have for lunch? Oh, oh we're God. back to that. We finally get to have this conversation together, not parallel. I know. What do you think? What do you like to have for lunch around so I, here? Around here, I really have two options. I go for a warm bowl or a nice Love wrap. A warm bowl. I know. I and a like a bowl. new place opened by our studio with warm bowl options, like right, right before you moved. So you really haven't even gotten a chance to explore the menu. No, I haven't, and I have an expert here. You should open a restaurant of warm bowls called Turdy's Warm Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Turdy's warm bowls. I'll take you to the place after. Like, I can they show you. you. They do. Because I have such a bizarre order. But it's also really simple, easy to memorize. Yeah, and they know me and they love me. They do, they do love you. Yeah. One woman in particular. I think, like, the first time I ordered from her, she was so shook that I didn't want any sauce. I think this place is, like, known for their cool, different, like, aioli well, dressings. bowls come with sauces. Yeah, and she was like, no sauce. And I said, no sauce. And she's like, so no sauce. And I said, yeah, like, like, no, no sauce. And she was like, okay, no sauce. I'm like, yeah, no sauce. And then we just kind of bonded after that. Now she's my best friend. And that's how you know opposite to track because ben, ben is the king of sauces. Ben is the king of sauces. Actually, last night, every once in a while, we order wolf and lamb. And if you don't know what that is, it is, like, probably the nicest of, like, two kosher steakhouses in the city. It's extremely expensive because kosher meat is expensive. And then on top of delivery, it's like, oh, you're getting a $10 item? Top cool. Of delivery, $50 it's $50. <laughs> So, like, when you order delivery, like, there's always a premium. But, like, when you're ordering wolf and lamb, it's insane. Because yeah. we order filet mignons, and they're so expensive. And then it's like, oh, $200 delivery fee. Every once in a while, we do it. And I really wanted it on Passover, but they were closed for Passover. So we just, like, kind of, we just went, we had, like, a crazy expensive dinner last night. And Ben sits down at the table with our perfectly cooked filet mignons, and he runs to the fridge and grabs, like, four different sauces. And I'm like, this is literally like a $60 steak. What the fuck do you need your trash craft sweet baby rays on this gorgeous steak? Like it's meant to be, not to be like, you know, like a foodie, but like that's when people say like you're going to the best omakase in the world. Like you don't need soy sauce. And that's right. I do disagree. I do too. Like Zach always says the best friend try doesn't need ketchup. And that's why your husband is smarter than you because I completely no. agree. Oh my God, no. Oh I my never God, have no. ketchup. I thought you were about to like drag him. No, I never have ketchup with a McDonald's french you're, fry. You're, no, it's so wrong. <gasps> Should we have McDonald's? Ooh. Mm. I don't know. I'm like so clean these days. It hurts. <sighs> But you know what? Part of being clean, and I feel like Kourtney Kardashian is always saying this, is like every now and then like eating the most vile trash. Yeah, well, you know what? Or we could get like warm bowls with McDonald's fries. You know what? That's balance, and I love that. Yeah, yeah, because I don't want to eat like a... A filet of fish. A McPlant. Yeah. We already discussed how it's like kind of toxic, yeah. literally. But fries are fries. Fries are fries. I... I love. Should I fries with the strides? Should I order it now, or like then it will no, be warm? It won't. No, okay, we'll, okay. Then we'll sit here like trying not to eat, and then yeah. like we'll get. And dry. then the whole studio will smell like McDonald's. It'll Yum. be so good. Um, back to what? What are we the good guys talking about food the whole I time? I know new episode of the Good Guys dropped today. Isn't it crazy? How, like the good guys are like literally becoming the biggest podcast in the world. They had Tata Mojo on. Does that affect your relationship with Ben? Uh, that's a really good question because. Two things about me is like I'm extremely like toxic, competitive, self-centered, but I also like really love Ben. You're supporting wife. I, I really am. So actually, no, the two things can be true. Like I'm actually, and the thing is, it's a TNN production. So a win for Ben it's is a, a win for me. In everyone's hat. But yeah. like when he gets like Tana. No, when he got like Hillary Duff and like was in People Magazine and their episode literally got like millions of downloads. Like, yeah, like that was hard. Is there a guest that they could get that would just put you over the edge that's a good question I mean of course like Taylor, Taylor Swift right. but that's not happening trust and believe um but like someone attainable that they could get yeah that would like kill me that's a good question who am I like obsessed with like Casey Musgraves Luke Combs but, like they would sooner come on toast like that's yeah. not yeah that's not attainable for them yeah like a Kardashian or still from friends that wouldn't kill me, honestly. Some of the Friends characters, and this is actually something I've been wanting to talk about, have been acting so wild on social media lately. Um, there must be like an Ew. agency. I'll tell you in a second. There must be like a marketing agency that not a lot of people know about. And like new celebrities have been discovering them and using them because they're all using the same tactics. And it started with Megan Trainer. And now the Jonas Brothers are in on it. And Courtney Cox is in on it too. What do they do? Make insane TikToks 
really high quality, like high production value, but like very on trend, getting other TikTokers, other celebrities to the point where it's so inauthentic, but it performs so well. It's so viral and it's having like major impact on these people's careers, music wise or just like celebrity wise. I find it so weird and annoying. Like Courtney Cox has like recently started to do that. She's like partnering up with all these TikTokers and like it's just annoying. Like I don't like it. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like ruining TikTok. I'm sorry. It's ruining TikTok. So you know what? But you're I'm like, with I'm with the government. Did Down you with go TikTok. viral last night? I did. It I was did. good stuff. Did you go viral? I like checked after like 30 minutes after you posted it, but I haven't checked today. I did. I did go viral. I posted a TikTok and a reel that is millions and hundreds of thousands. And you kind of like went viral within the Swifties with that TikTok of like you dumping oh, Ben. Oh, and I did go viral. It's kind I, of been like a viral week for me. Did you see I DM'd you a video, like a Swifty account reposted that video. Oh, I didn't and see. And I came about it organically. See, that's been like an interesting thing is I've been making kind of like niche content. Like I made this TikTok um, that went viral about Ben playing golf and it got like ripped off and put on all these golf pages and like <laughs> Do not read the comments. They are they're hysterical. So mean. First they're of all, like hysterical. they call me so toxic. They're like, he needs to leave his bitch ass toxic wife. Like, first of all, it was a joke. No, and it's like they're in the comments they think either you're having an affair with Elliot or, or Ben, ben is, is having, having an, an affair, affair with, with Elliot. Elliot. And it's like there's kind of like these conspiracy theories <laughs> in the golf community about me and Ben. But that's what happens. And then I made like niche Swifty content and like it gets put on the Swifty pages. So um yeah, I've kind of like I'm three for three. That's the price of going viral. Now are you going viral on the love is blind pages I am. I am it's very exciting ben it's actually ben's idea like creatively and he was so like annoyed that like he didn't think of it himself well he did he was like but you should do it yeah and that's just kind of the partnartnership creatively that we have right that's like you supporting good guys right he supports my work <laughs> dancing on the television but like we were so panicked that the stream would start even though like it wasn't uh, we were rushing rushing that to get was this the done. most painful just useless hour of life yeah at first it was like fun and exciting because it was like 8 15 and, it's and so i was texting you like is it just me is yeah. it you and the thrill kind of wore off extremely quickly yeah and i ended up feeling annoyed yeah i started a book i and then i didn't feel bad about waiting because it's like okay that's a perfect thing to do while yeah. you're waiting but then we both gave up and went towards succession by the time i logged into hbo max the stream was up. And then the stream started for us on Netflix, but most people couldn't watch it. And now they've said it will be up today by 12 p.m. Pacific time, so 3 o'clock. Like, most people still haven't seen it. Wow. Well, if only there was something to see. We watched it. We'll recap it. And just so you know, like, if you weren't able to catch it, like, Godspeed. No, you'll like, be okay, but I have thoughts. <laughs> also, our chat was so funny last night. We were being so funny. We never do that. We never, like, live. We're always watching shit at different times. And we, like, we save it for the toast. But I'm actually glad we have that chat. So in case there's anything I need to remember about how I felt. I yes scroll so maybe we should dive in because like now we're talking about we it can't stop yeah talking about it. love is we blind we can't stop and we won't stop, stop. we need to get all of our Whoa. singing in. yeah there was actually not a lot of singing last week like with the guest co-host maybe because like i felt embarrassed do they sing are they singers actually remy sings and snatchler loves a good snatchler song but it, i don't know it wasn't the vibe yeah i guess the giggly girlies aren't as like musical no they're not it's just like a weird thing about us yeah it just it's kind of what really, makes us us it says we're the musical podcast but it's not like a thing that other podcasts do like they don't just like break out into song and that's kind of why we're so successful no no, no. and that we love that about us but yeah. that's like not a normal thing is what no, i'm realizing but but why you know blend like, you in when you were born song with your friends Depends on the friend. Truly. Depends on the friend. Yeah. Like my friend Abe is very musical. So yes. Maybe it's just like a family thing. Maybe. Well, that's what I learned with my episode with Paige DeSorbo. Like birthday buddies mm -hmm. is a family thing. She's like, that's not a thing. Oh, so like when I said we were, she and I were birthday buddies. She well, I had said it on the toast too. Well, and it turns out like her, we don't have the same birthday. It's November 4th. Yeah. She's just like someone who's constantly like celebrated all week on mm -hmm. Instagram and there was confusion. Yeah. Yeah. But I like brought it up and she's like, I've never heard the term birthday buddy. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Did you go to school? No, I'm like, that That's was a school thing. Literally my childhood. Yeah. You had to like do a project on your birthday buddy. You could choose any of them. Maybe it was just our niche, like Jewish day school curriculum. I think it should be part of, you know, the core. Universal. The common core. Yeah, the universal curriculum of life. Who's your birthday buddy? Pick any of them and do a report. Yeah. How do you think I know so much about Jessica Simpson? How do you think I know so much about Sally Field, the flying nun? Jackie, I brought up <laughs> Sally Field. You have to watch the episode with Paige. I know you were busy, but, like, we literally had this conversation. I literally can't wait. I said you have the same, like, birthday week. And now, maybe if it was today, I would have done my paper on Lamar Odom. Is he another birthday buddy of mm -hmm. yours? Kind of a blessed day. 
a blessed day. Oh, happy day. Yeah, a couple of Scorpios. Um, Theo's birthday is coming up, and like I uh, must jump off a bridge. Yeah, I did the math recently. Shut the fuck up. Okay. How do you want to celebrate? I'll be here for it. Should we get all the like the try guys together? Maybe get butter, olive, like the whole crew. Claudia, yes. You know, if I did ever throw Theo birthday, like I would ask the dog walkers. I don't know like butters. I don't know their parents, but I would like ask. I would print out invitations and be like, "Can you pass these out to the crew?" <laughs> Slip them under the door. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not having a birthday party. I don't need all the smelly dogs in my house. No, but like, what would Theo want to do? Like on his best day, where does he like to go? The beach. He would like to go to that walking path. Oh my god, that's our place, me and him. Yeah, uh, that was before I got Bruno. We what? have vacationed um, at this house many times. That nearby has like this kind of a star. It's like a nature path. It's not even because it's not a path. It's literally acres, and you just walk and walk, and there's bridges but and the path streams. Is like less than two miles, but it feels. Oh really my god, long. it is not. Jackie one time tried to make us walk the whole thing. I uh, wanted to die. I tried to cut through the field and like literally ended up made with it a worse tick bite. Yeah, I made it worse. It's not two miles. It's twenty. It is. I used to run it every day. Like. <laughs> Pick me. Yeah. Okay. With Theo. But that's where Theo would want to spend his birthday. It's such a beautiful, like, maybe we go. <laughs> maybe we go. Let's see what the weather is. Well, see, yeah, that's Theo's, like, and it's really beautiful. There's, like, creeks and bridges and streams and fields and trees. Yeah. And benches that I loved, personally. Yeah. That's where Theo would like to spend his birthday. That's beautiful. Where would Bruno spend his birthday? In the arms of El Nolio. Yeah, on, like, a, the world's largest heating pad. <laughs> Yes. Right? Yes. Love that for him. Theo, Bruno has a lot of um, interests. Hobbies. Yeah, he really does. He's easy to please. He loves adventure. He's a man of many interests. Yeah. But he'd also be happy in the bed. And the heat, if, as long as there's heat. As long as there's heat. Bruno did stay with me for like a couple days last week. It was joyous. Yeah, and the boys were getting along. The boys were getting along. Bruno, um, he actually hasn't stayed with me since he's been like an independent boy who doesn't need to sleep in the crate and who can walk around freely when there's no one home. So this was the first time where he slept with us. And I have to say it was probably one of the greatest displeasures of my life. Um, You're wrong for that. Bruno is the type of dog who needs to sleep in your asshole. Like, my God, I couldn't get away from him fast enough. And every time I would like push him or like honestly kick him, like move. Right back up my ass. I had never slept so poorly in my entire life. It okay. was, like I said, one of the greatest displeasures of my life. Okay, well, Bruno had a great time. And that's all that matters. Bruno felt loved. Bruno didn't feel like he wasn't, you know, with his mama. He didn't feel he was honestly like, who's mama? You know, like he wasn't really I don't interested. Think he, said that. he wasn't like really like talking about you or actually probably even thinking about you. So it was totally fine. And I did my job as an auntie and a caretaker yeah. that he felt loved. And I put his needs before mine, letting him sleep in the bed. But I would be remiss, devastated, and heartbroken if I didn't just at least acknowledge how it was one of the greatest displeasures of my life. Okay, well, I just feel like then you're, you and Bruno are just like not compatible sleepers because he, We're and not. I, he and I are simpatico. Oh, my God. I actually never wanted to like commit animal cruelty more than I did Stop. in my life. Like I wanted to kick him in the throat. Like he was so annoying. I'm sorry. I did. Because, like, one thing about me, like, I'll do anything for the dogs. But, like, mess with my sleep, like, that is just like a no-no for me. I can't listen to this anymore. Especially because, like, I got my hatch last week, and I was, like, really wanting to, like, test it out. And, like, Bruno, like, I was up with Bruno. Like, I wasn't up with my hatch. What do you think about Hatchio? I'm obsessed. Like, Ben is obsessed, too. I'm loving the nighttime routines and the morning routines. I haven't taken advantage of the nighttime routines yet. I didn't even know it was a thing until Margo told me. And I kept seeing this rise button. I'm like, no, this rest button I'm like what is this for but these like 15 minute like sound baths and lighting techniques I'm obsessed I've never felt more rested honestly yeah welcome yeah I don't feel like I was like against the hatches no, isn't one weren't. of those things it's just something I turned you on to oh you discovered the hatch for sure and for do you have a code for the redheads no it's just hatch.co I'm just like promoting it oh we gotta get a code because like everyone was but asking if, for if one you know on some websites where they're like where did you hear about this product say the toast just the redheads Come on. oh sorry yeah 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 the redheads, the redheads right. new episode drop two weeks ago it's good stuff thanks for letting us know <laughs> <laughs> well if you follow me on instagram I'm you know i'm kidding you i know and our next book is a snitch's choice and she chose i wonder why a book called the magnolia palace yeah that's kind of like a really weird thing for her to choose i don't know why she would have chosen that the magnolia palace but i think it's historical fiction so i'm not complaining that's so not counselor i know that's like the power of el nolio um okay now we have without, so much to discuss now without further now ado. now you know what why don't you 
Crunch? Hit it. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Actually, wait. <laughs> Come here. You see, it says... It says munch on the soundboard. So okay, so just wait. Without further ado, did it, did it do, here are the fast size stories that you need to know. <laughs> gorgeous. Today's episode is brought to you by Liquid IV. Liquid IV is the category winning hydration brand fueling your well-being and their hydration multiplier is a one product you're missing in your daily routine. In just one stick you'll get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. Use it first thing in the morning before a workout when you feel run down after a long night out and on long flights. I actually took one this morning because I'm really prone to migraines when I'm on my period which I got today so um dehydration is like a trigger for my migraines so I took a liquid IV just to like stay on top of things you know is yeah. that okay with you I just feel like you could have done the ad without letting us know I'm so authentic I would never lie one stick of liquid IV into 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone it contains 12 delicious refro refreshing flavors that keep your hydration routine exciting and inside the pack there are five essential vitamins b3 b5 b6 b12 and vitamin c it has three times the electrolytes of a traditional sports drink it's made with premium ingredients it's non-gmo free from gluten dairy and soy and whatever like a trigger for dehydration is for you or like it's hot out you're hungover whatever the reason is it's so important to stay on top of your hydration and liquid iv is just like saving you time like why drink one bottle of water without liquid iv when you could just drink one bottle of water with liquid iv and save yourself having to drink other water multiply yeah multiply your hydration that's a good slogan for them i'll tell them they should get ed sheeran to be the face it could be ed. yes <laughs> grab your liquid iv in bulk nationwide at costco or you can get 20 percent off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code toast at checkout that's 20 percent off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code toast at liquidiv.com Today's episode is also brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Whether you're starting a new business, growing one, if you want to be if you want to be in it to be successful, you need the most talented people on your team. And that's why Jackie used ZipRecruiter to find me, the most talented podcaster she's known. That's how we met. That's how we met on ZipRecruiter. It's kind of like a modern love story. Right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash toast. If you've been wanting to start a business or you've been just kind of like having a hard time finding people to get your business off the ground, try ZipRecruiter. Here's why you should let ZipRecruiter hire for your business. Their powerful matching technology finds highly, highly qualified candidates for a wide range of roles. Got your eye on one or two people who'd be perfect for your job? Well, ZipRecruiter lets you send them a personal invitation so they're more likely to apply. ZipRecruiter also offers attention grabbing labels to speak that speak to your job flexibility. So if you're offering remote or training provided urgent, you can add those labels to really help your job stand out. Let ZipRecruiter fill all your roles with the right candidates. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to this exclusive address, ZipRecruiter.com dot com slash toast if you want to try zip recruiter for free that's zip recruiter dot com slash t-o-a-s-t zip z-i-p recruiter r-e-c-r-u-i-t-e-r dot com slash toast zip recruiter the smartest way to hire can't guarantee that you'll find your turdy lou but you will find a great coworker. i actually i can guarantee that you'll find your turdy lou like i can you can yeah you feel strongly about yeah. that sorry i just needed a snack on hand for what because i get hungry like but you're gonna eat on the podcast if i get really have you hungry. learned nothing we'll take a break no if you because get hungry we'll take a break no like next ad break i could just push my mic out wow okay like comes to New York and like forgets everything she knows no because I was just thinking about like how hungry I am that's and fine we haven't even gotten into the first story yeah and I just feel like I get a pass oh, like I guess a pregnancy pass I feel like we are um like recording later this is actually like we're recording when we would eat because you were like busy this morning so when we would eat lunch we have missed a meal sort of and that's just like not something it's I can unacceptable go for. it's unacceptable yeah. like you have to have a lot of small meals yeah so, like I won't you won't even know I'm eating if I decide to yeah you'll get like daggers from me but go for it Wow, judgy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, one thing about me is, like, I put the A-V-I-T of this show above all else. And, like, you kind of wanting to eat and, like, mess with the audio. Like, that's actually a personal attack. Okay. But do as you please. Do what's best for you. Thank you. Our first story, Netflix is apologizing for the 75-minute Love is Blind season four reunion delay. We are incredibly sorry, they say. So... Love is Blind reunion was supposed to air live last night. Nobody needed it to be live. Nobody asked for it live. But I, I'm assuming Netflix is trying to get into live content. Right. And they they just saw this as Chris an opportunity. Rock thing. But a live reunion is not something anybody needs. And, and we'll get into the reasons why. I agree. Later on. So 8 p.m. We all sit down to watch. The show does not come on. 
for 75 minutes. Now we're all on Twitter. Netflix is posting some jokes. Right. They and got like so desperate as to post a picture of Irina being like, wait. it'll be worth the wait. So at 8.05, they said, love is blind. We will be late. We're, we're on at 8.15. You know what? I was okay with that. It actually worked better for my schedule. No, and like I understand this is like a big live event, whatever. I'm, you know, I work in tech, so I understand these things happen. And then at 8.15, nothing happened for an hour, and they didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. So everyone's wondering, and it's like that to me is unacceptable to give no sort of well, Vanessa Lachey went live and just Who said Who the fuck is following Vanessa no, Lachey? I'm not, but then I saw it, you know, through the 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 for you page yeah through you know the internet did its thing and she said they're sitting there they're not speaking they're waiting you haven't missed anything we broke the internet uh we're still here so are you trying to tell me that more people were trying to watch the love is blind reunion than we're trying to watch the chris rock special i don't know i personally can't believe that i know and i just feel like maybe they had better systems in place for chris rock because that would have been so unacceptable like Right, like who's really the p- most pissed from Love is Blind? Just like the fans and the cast members, like what are they going to do? Their time is over. But yeah. like if that had happened to Chris Rock, like. Yeah, it would have been really bad for everyone. Yeah, and he would have been so pissed. So I'm not saying like they don't, they, they allowed this to happen, but like that was not an option. So then I guess at like 9.15, they just started to film and they were like, we need, we need to get this filmed and then we'll put it on Netflix at some point. But then for some people, they were able to watch what they were filming live yes. and that included us. So I think they started filming and they're like, we'll work on getting it up as we're filming. And maybe like 15 minutes into their filming, you could start watching it right. live and all you had to do was rewind. Right, which is what we did. Which is what we did. And it maybe, I don't know if it was because we had waited so long and there was so much hype that like, only, you know, you're set up to fail with that much, like, excitement and hype after all this. But I found the reunion to be positively dreadful. Um, I, I guess it just really highlighted, because it wasn't edited to make things, like, quick and concise, it really ed- it, it really highlighted how beyond average and mundane these people are. Like, when you think about live reunions, which my only point of reference is, like, the Real Housewives of Miami, these are, like, professional reality stars well no even still it was their first season and it obviously didn't go well because they never did something like that again but it was kind of amazing like it was chaos yeah but there are a lot of things where a live format is great yes people just like talking about their feelings that needs to be edited no and especially because they have, found a group of people uh, who, who are, are so, so long fucking winded marshall yeah. zach paul and also it's like they're there to talk about their feelings which always just takes longer and it's the more bushes to beat around. Right. And like we like kind of like don't care, you know? No, but when they first cut to like, I think it was Marshall that like they were catching up with everyone and they said hi to Marshall and his answer was too long. And yep. I was like, this is why we edit. Yeah, they they actually really, it was so obvious how badly they needed editors because everyone was so long-winded. But I will say, on the other hand, there were a lot of people who, without a splice of editing, came off really well and were really impressive. I thought Chelsea was so Mm well-spoken and impressive. She didn't stutter. She didn't stutter. Not like every sentence meant something. Of course, there there was the like crew that was abound. And then there were some of the feelings people who were talking in circles, but I also also felt like it gave a lot of people the opportunity to shine yeah and if you can do well live like that like that's really impressive that's very fair um I felt like Chelsea and Kwame as a couple probably came out on top yes they just they were so in sync with each other everything that they were saying was exactly you know I felt very good about them yeah like, and I the was end. the type of person who was completely shocked that they said yes like I was confused Ford. that Kwame was interested in Chelsea because the whole time he seemed like he literally would rather be anywhere else than by her side. And I guess that's what the feel, like the feelings of a lot of the fans were. And they addressed that head on. And he was just like, you literally saw a drop in the bucket of what our relationship was. And you know what? There's proof in the pudding. They are still married and they you know, seemed really happy. People say that. And I'm like, sure. But we still saw what we saw. Like yeah. even those moments. Okay, they're not 100% of the moments that you had. But like we saw them. Yeah. And this was the first time where I felt like, oh, I was bamboozled. And... That is not, we did not see an accurate representation of their relationship. I also didn't really understand why all this effort was clearly put into the reunion live. They had a live studio audience. They did like a bunch of stuff. And why they chose to have Jackie and Josh participate via Zoom the day before. I feel like that love triangle was probably one of the biggest dramas of the season. Maybe they didn't want to come. 
but they don't really have a choice, you know? It's like bravo, you know, you come. Really? They made it seem to Irina like she had a choice and she chose to come and they were... It was not a good showing for Irina. Like I, I don't know. I, um, you know me. Her like, voice was so trembly and like she made no good points. She just she, like apologized. She made some good points. I, if anything, it was good for her because I actually felt bad for her because she like was clearly so nervous. She also looked amazing. She did. Which is always great. It counts for something. But I felt like as best as she could try to explain herself without being like, listen, I did those things and, and I'm sorry for them. <laughs> yeah. Um, there were some explanations in there that I understood. Me too, actually. And maybe because he was just pissing me off, I found Zach to be like holds a little bit more weight as a villain than he was he was a victim but he was also giving villain energy and I saw it during the show and I think like the way everyone was coming for Irina and then like he just like kept going and he just showed his you know he showed under the hood of, of his mind like when he came out and like really thought he did something and he was like oh, I feel like you came on this show to be famous which is like okay doesn't ever run I don't feel that I mean one yes to some degree if you're going on reality TV like you're comfortable with the idea of being known but if she really wanted to be famous she would have made their relationship seem like something yes. that it wasn't she wouldn't have asked to go home before Mexico that and context she, was really important she wouldn't have ended the relationship as prematurely as she did because she kicked herself off the show like if if fame was really that motivating for her she would have hid her feelings made it to the altar and said no a hundred percent I completely agree and I think the context her adding that she had actually asked to go home she knew immediately when she saw him it wasn't the right fit um adds a lot of color to and I'm sure like they convinced her you know don't go home and I'm sure she convinced herself you know what maybe love can grow from this like yeah. I, saw, I like I loved him in the pods I didn't get that feeling when I saw him but people have started off with worse and, yep. and ended up together so I understand wanting to go to Mexico and giving it a shot I don't think I would have behaved in the way that she did but like she was clearly like very awkward very She's uncomfortable so young. she was 25 at the time and doesn't know how to like say these hard things that she's thinking and feeling so she just like becomes defensive shuts and, down and rude yeah but I just find it funny so how he literally was like you know you came on the show to be famous and the audience the audience was giving Jerry Springer oh ooh, ah, shut up um and he's like you know and if you really want to see the receipts I'm not going to bring receipts but if you want to see them go to my Instagram which I did by the way and there was probably like 10 slides of like notes app story and I'm sorry I could not read it it was so long and there were so many typos I read it oh what was the the thesis was it was a really nice story about like the power of forgiveness and giving grace because he gave that to his mother um and she had been like very disappointing over like during his childhood and like in and out of uh, I saw she struggled with addiction right but the moral of the story was that at one point he just decided like I'm I forgive you and and she got uh sober and was able to be there for him and they had a few really good years and moments together that they wouldn't have had if he hadn't given that grace and forgiveness so mm -hmm. give grace and give forgiveness that was I that was the receipt okay that's not a receipt and he really was not giving like grace or forgiveness energy um and he right. doesn't and have he to and he, he doesn't have, have said to that instead of being like go check my instagram he could have been like told the give story grace and give well no no, no, no. <laughs> like this story would have been the whole reunion but you, he could have and and he could have walked the walk in that with irena like yeah what I Irina just, did was not nice, but like y you could, it's been a year, you're happily married. Right. She's obviously come out on the, on the bad the side loser. of things. You could have given grace and gave forgiveness. I just want to say, like, I went to everyone's Instagrams last night just to, like, see what people have been posting. And to be honest, based on the content, if there was anyone who, just based on their content, who I thought came on the show to get famous, it would be Zach. So I just felt like he was being really hypocritical and, like, kind of loved that he was the victim. And he was a victim. Like, she was wrong. But he leaned into the victim mentality so hard. And whenever people lean into it too hard, like, they push a little too far, I start to turn. And yes. I felt that way a few times last night with a few different people for me that was Zach like he was bothering me to, it's like so clear he won he's there with his wife like they look so happy and she like the crowd was like literally booing her and he just kept kind of like kicking a person when she was down and I know he has every right to because like she was really mean to him like for sure but he, he came out on top he has the wife he had the audience and I just felt like he was so happy to be the victim that he weirdly turned himself into the villain that's what keeps happening in yeah just, in every show but I also felt like Micah was leaning a little too heavily into being a victim with Paul you know you were texting see me that and I actually don't agree because I need to look back at my notes but 
I don't know that she would have said yes, first of all. And I, I like that she explained why she needed him to go first. Because she needed to know that if he said yes, it was, like, not because she said yes. And you know what? I was so confused when she did that. And then I was like, maybe she didn't want to be embarrassed. But her explanation made complete sense to me. Yeah, just based on their, every relationship is different. And, like, if she's going to be married to him forever, she needs to know it's because you know that it was his choice and which, she probably felt like he was I like get. having doubts but when I watched it like I didn't feel like she was gonna say yes I just felt like she didn't want to be the villain nobody wants to be the villain but like at the end of the day like these are your real lives and this is a real marriage so someone has to say no if it's not right and then Zach comes in and says other people have said that like you were never talking about getting married and when we did see their relationship on TV like it was not a serious relationship okay I just want to say also we only saw what we saw I what know. Zach said was so confusing because he kept changing what he said and what he ended was like I spoke to a lot of other women whose opinion it was was that you didn't want to marry Paul that's what he ended up saying which is the most vague thing so what the fuck she wasn't even friends with really anyone except Irina yeah so it's like what are you talking about and and by the way it turned out that Irina was the one who was saying that and, and they haven't have spoken since, since Mexico. Mexico right so it's like you really don't know anything I felt like Zach was again trying to like defend another victim and he was just turning himself into the villain like I didn't at first he said a lot of the other women said you said you weren't going to marry Paul and that's like <gasps> And then it turns out, Irina said in Mexico, she didn't think that they would end up getting married. Yeah. The fuck does she know? Yeah, no, And so maybe she, she said that because she was in love with Paul. Right, but also then with like, they tried to make this Irina-Paul thing a storyline, which is not a storyline on Paul's end no. whatsoever. Like what Irina thinks and feels about him has nothing to do with him. And so they were trying to get like Paul to apologize for some flirty behavior going on. And it's like, Micah kind of dug into that and it's like, girl after a conversation with Kwame like I know she should just be quiet yeah because yes. that conversation with Kwame we could like say they needed closure no that was crazy that was just Sexy. inappropriate yeah. drunk you know touching t like uh, what could have been did I make it you, and that's normal for humans but just let's just call it what it was let's like, call we it what it was shady yeah no of course um I did think like when Zach popped in to like kind of defend Paul it was because like Nick and Vanessa were like nonstop asking him follow up questions to like him saying that she wasn't nurturing. Well, why didn't you say it? Well, that's not really something you say. It's like it's a it's a trait somebody naturally has and you don't want to force them to become something that they're not. But don't you feel like they kind of like wouldn't let up. Yeah. And on that point, I disagreed with the consensus that if you're breaking up with someone over like a feeling that you have that they're not this or that, I don't think you owe it to them to, to say that. Because I agree. One, you could be completely wrong. That could just be how you see them. You don't see Micah as nurturing, but she might be nurturing. Mm -hmm. Like, y you're not the end-all, be-all judge. But if you have that, like, gut. weird gut feeling about someone, I don't think you need to explain that to them when you're breaking up. Like, you, sh you should have a conversation about breakups, but I don't think that's something that needs to be said to her face. And what, so she could act more maternal? Like, he... he nurturing get, was the word. He, well, m maternal nurturing, like, because he didn't see her as, as the a mother. mother. Um... He didn't get that vibe from her, but he also said, like, maybe I just didn't bring that out in her. Right. Which no, is really fucking fair. He was very diplomatic because what he said, like, could have been taken, if, if you interpreted it just at face value, as so fucking rude. Like, it I is, didn't see it her. It is really, it, it is rude. It, it's, it's a harsh thing to say about someone. And in a normal relationship, you can think that and feel it, but I don't even think you should you tell say someone it. that. If you're breaking up with them, regardless, like, you can harbor some reasons, things you think about, weird things you think about them without yes. telling them. But they're on a TV show, so he had to tell us. Right. And it was really awkward. Awkward and uh, and mean. Yeah. I just, I honestly, like, for me, the loser of the reunion was Zach. Like, shut up. And, like, his Instagram is so thirsty. Like, property brothers. Oh, like, he's obsessed. Like, I'm telling you. It's you some literally hate him. And with the singing, some per one, yeah, somebody came on the show to get famous. And I really don't think it was Irina. I think it was fucking Zach. Yeah. Like, just look at his Instagram, okay? With, like, the proselytizing about forgiveness. Like, I can't. While acting like the least forgiving person on the planet. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about Jackie, Josh, and Marshall. Again, so annoying that we had this, like, turnt Zoom interview. But they do look really happy. And I didn't realize it's actually been a full year. Yeah. I'm glad that they delay it so long so we can have some results. Proof. Mm -hmm. And they look really happy. And they're definitely better suited for one another. But getting some um, insight into, like, what went down was really interesting. And, like, I don't know. Marshall has just been kind of playing this, like, you know, victim. victim, but not victim, like sweet angel, like this whole time. And he was with the bad, bad Jackie. And I feel like we got a peek, you know, beneath the, the, the surface of like what really went down. And it's like, clearly here's what happened. But like nobody wanted to say it. Vanessa Lachey saw her career flash in front of her eyes. She called him gay 
Jackie, Jackie, Jackie called him gay. That was in text messages. It was in text messages that were leaked in a group chat. She's like, his dick is really big, but like he never wants to fuck, and he's like not aggressive at all, and like she wants like a guy who's gonna throw her around. Did she say G A Y? Um, I think she actually used the, a worse word in the chat. In the chat, some words were blur blurred out. I don't know if she said exactly gay. By the way, you can say gay, Jackie. No, no, but I'm saying, did she, I'm not saying oh. because it's a bad word. Uh. I'm saying because did she say it? Did she write out gay? G yeah. I don't know. I have to go look again. She was saying like soft. She was saying beta. She was either alluding to gay. And so she, they were like joking around and she was like, oh, well, you don't want to fuck? Like maybe you're gay. And he's like, well, you have a big jaw. Maybe you're a man. And he made it very clear to say he didn't use a derogatory word, which I think we all know is, you know, the word. I'm, not, I'm certainly not going to say it. Give me no, a I'm not going to. A letter. A letter. T. Got it. Um, so... I think like she tried to make it seem like he maybe said that and then he was like I did not say that but I just think it was a really interesting insight and it's like I think what we saw with Jackie and Marshall is not at all really how it was I think there was like another side to Marshall and my god did I despise him last night he could not get a straight answer but now Silashay would like ask a follow-up he's like well I'm getting there and it's like oh we only have so much time Marshall right, we're live when I was watching the show and Marshall and Jackie were going down and it's like I know Marshall, that Jackie's like wronger than Marshall, but I like her more than Marshall, so I'm team Jackie. And then last night I felt vindicated because I feel like she was just like true to herself. She got with Marshall. It wasn't a match. They had some words along the way, but it wasn't completely one-sided. No. And then she gave Josh a shot and that was the right fit for her. And I believe her that she didn't cheat. And the thing about him wanting to propose to someone else. And here's what's like, people can't even see their own hypocrisy. Marshall's so upset because even if it wasn't cheating, even if the next day she went and spoke to Josh, it's like, wow, you could really just go and be with Kiss another, another man guy. like right after we break up. And it's like, okay, so Jackie and Marshall broke up. Then that other girl, what's her name? Keisha, who I don't even, she wasn't a major yeah. player. Keisha texted him and they, they started to get together because he was like, well, what else am I doing sort of thing? And it's like, that's the exact mentality that Jackie had when she went with Josh. So like, you did the exact yep. same thing, but you can't even see yourself. Yeah, so I don't know if it was just everyone pissing me off or um, it was like a really bad reunion, but I just felt like everyone who had been villainized for good reason, like I, I just really saw their side. And I think the people who became victims were so, um, so who had like, a, who were the victims of these like villains actions were so like living for people on social media, like having sympathy for them, that they leaned in so hard to the point where it's like, calm down, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. That I started seeing them as the villains. That's how I feel overall. And I also feel like e each of the couples that are married are so strong. Yeah. And I really believe in them. I couldn't even tell you who I think is the strongest. I mean, obviously Tiffany, Tiffany and Brett. Brett. But everyone was like up on Tiffany and Brett's level last night. Yes, and the like way Tiffany Bliss and Brett. and Zach, like I know. they're so simpatico. Chelsea and Kwame, like, were just one person mm -hmm. they were like a united front yeah like he defended her he supported her and you love to see that and he really said everything right right and it w didn't sound like a line scripted yeah i yeah no he said everything right i want to apologize to chelsea i want to apologize to chelsea's family like and i wanted to apologize to chelsea and kwame for like not for doubting believing. yeah we were doubters non-believers non um it was a terrible reunion having said that I think, you know, uh, Nick Lachey must have watched last season's reunion where he quite literally said four words. And this time he got more he in there. Eight. This one, it, it is really Vanessa's thing. And like Vanessa is so invested. In, and I feel like she she's getting better and she definitely cares a lot. And she keeps up with everything, you know, and all the texts leaked and all the TikToks. She keeps up with it all, which I feel like is the sign of like, a, it's a, she cares. Um, but it's just, there's something about it that's not working. She just puts a lot of herself into it when it's like hosting, you got to take yourself out a little bit. There were just like too many personal moments for her. Yeah. But I think they feel really personal and close to the show. Yeah. The video of the bridesmaid and Paul. Is I had seen it. Me and too. I, some of the other stuff she was talking about that would like rumors that Barbara was a hired His, yeah, actress. actress. I, I hadn't seen any of that. So I was like, wow, you're really deep in it. Most of us are just like watching the show and moving on with our lives. Right. But I did see Paul and the Bridesmaid and it made me chuckle. But I didn't think there was anything there. No, I could see, uh, well, I could see it, it being like a hey. And I could also see it being like, uh, get out of my way. Thanks. Bye. I also feel like Paul, just based on his energy last night, like deeply regretted participating in this experiment. Like he kind of just came out with no wife. Some people like really like did not like him. They thought he was the villain in the relationship because he was the one who said no. Um, 
he like had to answer for all these personal things last night. I just feel like he was like hating every minute of it. Yeah, but I don't think he's a bad guy. Like I don't think he deserves Me that. I think he like went through the process. I think he went into it open eyed. Yep. Open hearted. Open minded. Went through the entire thing and came to the conclusion of no. Yeah. Meanwhile, I thought it was so fucking weird when Marshall said like he wanted to get to the altar with Jackie. Like just to That's have, thirsty. Yeah, like that's what people do who that's what they were accusing Irina of right like that was so weird to me it's like you guys literally hate each other why do you still want to stand on the altar to have that chance to make that decision in that moment like there's no decision to right make he's like it. I was robbed of that there's no decision to make it's a big fat no no for me like m I like hate Marshall yeah Marshall and Zach like hate you because they both were like living for being the victims yeah I know you really hate Zach <sighs> desperately but I'm happy for him and Bliss. Like, they actually looked really happy. And, like, to hear her dad came around and to hear that Kwame's mom came around. It, to me, it's not a red flag when someone's parent is, like, so doubtful. It's like this person no. raised you, gave up everything for you, sacrificed everything for you, and you're going to do something so crazy. And you know what? For Kwame and for Bliss, it worked out. The way my favorite character on this season was Bliss's dad. I know. Because he was just speaking facts. And I also felt like when he met Zach he went into it semi-open-minded as much as you could be given the weirdness of the situation. And Zach was a freak. Yup. Zach was a freak. He said, do you fish? No. Do you golf? No. Okay, so we don't have much in common. And then Zach starts talking about the penal code. Right. Like, And he's just like flexing, like something that nobody cares. gives a shit about. And it's like, shut up. Yeah, no, it was a bad and showing. I think it was more so her, it wasn't her dad doubting the process. He was just like, this is who you chose? It's a fair question. But there's obviously a lot more to Zach. And I think... Bliss's father has seen that now, and I'm happy for them, but I didn't find fault in, in his, his reaction. reaction. Me neither. And I didn't find fault in Kwame's mom, like, not participating in the charade. No. Like, it sucks now that they've been married for a year and seem to have a good marriage. Like, she wasn't at their wedding, but, like, it's okay. It's okay, because it was, like, televised a and television fake, fake wedding. Yeah. yeah. But I did think it was interesting that Paul and Micah um, dated briefly after the show. Yeah. Well, because that's always the thing. It's like, maybe we're not ready to get married, but I do love you. And yeah. like, why do we have to stop? Like Raven and SK from last season. But like then he cheated on her. So. Oh. But it, it, then it didn't work out of natural causes. Yeah. I feel like the show is really good. But like I need them to like change a few things. Like I need them to cut the episodes down. Like I need them. Th there's no reason this needed to be 14 episodes. I feel like every episode we saw... The same people having the same conversations, mm -hmm. but like with different people, you know? Yeah. It was just regurgitating the same, I'm not sure, but no, like and they different like, And words. they give us all that crap, but then there was a conversation between Chelsea and Micah with Outside. the dogs. And, about, and it seemed juicy. And like, why isn't that in the show? We saw so many filler conversations, but that one, which is actually substantial because they never got to finish their conversation in Mexico. We don't see. Also, it's not fair that like Irina texts. <laughs> DM'd Bliss saying you dodged a bullet and got so much heat for it. But the Jackie girls said it. literally said the same thing. They saw Zach and everyone was like, oh, he's a freak. Uh, Bliss dodged a bullet. Right. But only Irina got slack for that. Yeah. And in my opinion, Irina dodged a bullet, so. Yeah. So that's Love and Spline season four. Yeah. It was a fun ride. It was a fun ride. It was fun to be a part of it. It was. I mean, I'll do it again. Yeah, me too. I didn't do it last season. It wasn't a great season. I mean, the thing is, when I was on the Netflix page and I was like scrolling through the first season. I forgot. First season was so good. Like I know. We, we think about Lauren and Cameron and they're amazing. But like all those Jessica other freaky ass Mark. couples. Jessica Mark. That girl Stacy, who was like the wellness coach. Like she was like a freak. Like there was so much good stuff. Yeah. It will, it will like it will never be as good as it was that first season. Yeah. It, who? How many couples got married in season three? <sighs> Can you look it up? I, I honestly oh. have no idea. It was um no, oh, Nick and Danielle. No. Was season, that a different season? That's a different thing. Oh, okay. That wasn't Jared and no, Rihanna. No, season two. Oh. Well, there was, there's none from season two because they both got divorced. Right. So, two marriages in season three. And what were their names? And no, are they still together? What's the success rate right now? Because it's 50% before season, with season one and two. Yeah. It's honestly like... It's so confusing. I cannot remember anyone's names. Like, after the season is done airing, like, I'm done with the show. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the people are so out of my mind forever. Except Lauren and, and Cameron Hamilton, like, live on forever in my brain. And Jessica and Mark. And Amber and Barnett. Amber Barnett, yes. Oh, Alexa and Brennan, yes, from last season, Israeli queen. They're married still. She married, like, a farmer from the middle of nowhere, and they were so different, but, like, fell in love instantly. They were like the Brett and Tiffany of last season. Great. Anyone else married from last season? Nancy and Bartise. Okay, so we're back to 50-50 odds. But got, they, they are done. So, no, we're 50-50 odds in the franchise before season four. 
right? No. I don't know. Like, I don't uh. like with the math. I honestly. No. Yeah. 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 Are you ready for our next story? If it's the next story, that's brought to you by Legacy Box, perchance. Oh, it is. All right. <clears throat> Who has a VCR? Anyone? A film projector? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Legacy Box allows you to visit your memories without those antiquated machines as easy as one, two, three. So if you don't have a Legacy Box, you haven't purchased one yet, but you have tons of like family heirlooms, VCRs, memories, cassettes locked up in a box somewhere in your basement, Get to step in. You can load Legacy Box with your old tapes, film, and pictures, and se- and they'll send it back to you on a thumb drive, on the cloud, ready to watch in it, and easy to share. It is so simple, it's like magic. So Legacy Box is a service that is literally saving families so much time, energy, and money on preserving their old memories. How it works is you'll send in your Legacy Box filled with the old tapes, whether that's VHS, camcorder, picture, film. Their, professionally, their professional team will digitize everything by hand right here in the USA, and you'll get it back on a thumb drive or the cloud along with your originals. It's so simple. It's like magic. We did it. It was the best. And then we all, like when it came back, plugged it in. It was so easy and watched these old home videos of us growing up, like listening to the Spice Girls. Like it was so cute. Memories that really we would have forgotten about if we weren't able to preserve it. And we had tried many years before to like convert the VHS, do it ourselves, and it was impossible. And like we borderline ruined some of the videos. So just let the professionals at Legacy Box handle it. Of course, we have a code for a limited time. You can get started preserving your past and save 50% off when you go to LegacyBox.com slash toast and share and revisit those special memories from your past. It's LegacyBox.com slash T-O-A-S-T. LegacyBox.com slash toast. That's a great thing to do as a gift or if you just want to like, do something nice for your family, you'll like ultimately become like the favorite daughter, granddaughter, stepchild, whatever. Auntie. Um, auntie. It's kind of like a good way to get in the good races of everyone in the family. And that's where you are, right? Yeah, constantly. Because you did it for us. I did. Are you ready for our next story, which is a little Coachella recap? Yes. Coachella 2023 weekend one was underway in Palm Springs, California this weekend. And we've got some celebrity couple news spotting. Yes, there was a lot of celebrities in attendance. Yeah, and we'll talk about Coachella in general if there are things to share. But Kendall and Bad Bunny got close at Coachella 2023. He um, was a performer. Was a performer. They were spotted like at the festival grounds, walking, looking at each other looking close and and semi-intimate no i mean like they're dating like and then also there was like that video of him on golf cart yep where he's sitting next to a girl sitting next to someone whose hair is blowing onto him and there's a voice in the background and it sounds like our girl and it looks totally like her chocolate brown hair and she was at Co- like it was her it's it her, her. like I, I went, it was kind of rude that he like didn't just like show twist her. it yeah <laughs> no but also people are acting like this is some sort of confirmation it's already been confirmed that picture of them on the horse from like last week like they're dating yeah i think a lot of people are in denial because they don't like it people really are some some couples will like get together and it's like or they are spotted together and are like they're together yeah and these two show up literally every day doing something more you know normal and intimate than ever before and it's still in the air i just want to say i know like nobody's here for it i'm so here for it like the the headline is kendall and bad bunny get close at coachella as romance rumors heat up no no as their romance is confirmed no as their romance is heating up and getting more serious by the passing day do i think this is like one true love like always and forever no but i I think this is a really great thing for both of them yeah you know, he's really breaking into the American market. Who's more American than the Kardashians? She, you know, the whole family needs a boost, and he's so well-liked. I lo- love this. Love. I agree. Here and for it. And it looks like they had a great weekend. Um, What's bad? Kendall's friends, like, a lot of them were at Coachella. Kaylee and Justin were there. Justine Sky. Kylie. Kylie was there without Timothy Chalamet. Are they really dating? I don't know. We reported it last week. Like, her car was spotted outside his house, even though, like, the only way they would know that that's literally her car is like if you know Chris Jenner told them like it, it's giving very much like PR, but um, it seems like there is like a lot of proof that they are seeing each other, and I just like I cannot imagine because to me like Kylie looks so mature for her age, and he looks so immature for his age. It almost looks predatory the relationship. Like he looks fourteen and she looks thirty. Yeah, it makes and she's like a mom. Like it makes no sense. She's so mature for it's her just, age. It's so crazy to me because for so many girls and women like he is the one their crush yeah. and like for me i'm i just i personally like i don't, I don't feel have, that way i don't have crushes on teenagers so like that's just maybe why i'm not like other girls yeah what is his age not even that young he just looks you know who he looks like 
He looks like the guy that in this week's episode of Vanderpump Rules, Katie brings to bowling night. She's like, I'm dating someone 25. And I'm like, really? Are you sure you're not dating someone 12? Because he looks so young. He looks like literally like one of my NYU orientation like leaders. He's 27. No, he looks 17. And he's, he's really skinny. He's 5'10". Means nothing to me. Like these facts, you know, to me, he's I like 4'11 and he's in the ninth grade. Like, it's just crazy. Yeah. Wow. So she was there That's at Coachella. That's one that I'm just going to keep disbelieving until, yeah. like... Like how people are doing with Kendall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I believe Kendall. And Me too. Bad. And Mr. Bunny. And Mr. Bad, yeah. Another couple, celebrity spotting, Sean Mendes and Camila Cabello, were PDAing at Coachella. They are not back together, sources uh, according say. to sources, but that they remain friends with a lot of love and history between them. They aren't dating again, dating again but they are smooching all over the festival. Yeah, okay, so maybe they're not dating again, but like they're definitely heating things back up. They went to Coachella together. That's like a planned thing. I saw videos and pictures, TikToks. They were like extremely like lovey. He yeah. was like standing behind. Like they're like, or maybe they're not boyfriend and girlfriend, but like they're on their way. I don't know. This to me seems actually really normal. Like this is what people do. They, they oh, you're at the same place. The party is like your ex. Like, oh, maybe will they, won't they? It's just unfortunate that we are all seeing it. I don't think they'll get back together because I think whatever reason they broke up for was obviously serious enough because they were in a serious relationship. But like if they're both single and they are on good terms, like why not hook up? This is just the weird thing about Coachella. It's like celebrities kind of forget who they are and they just like stand in crowds of massive people, which they would never do. And make out. Like, it's just, they all act so normal. Yeah. Like, Kendall and Bad Bunny. We have another story about Leonardo DiCaprio. It's like, you kind of, the Coachella's like kind of this, like, like, lawlessness where the rules go out the window. But they don't because everyone's filming everything. Right. And it's not a safe place. No, it's not. But they, they, they act like it is. Yeah. I, w I would be here for them getting back together, but I also feel bad for Sabrina. I know. Even though, like, Sabrina and Shawn Mendes, like, he t told us very curtly, uh, were, like, never a thing or never going to be a thing, and he never wishes for them to be a thing. So my heart hurts for her as well, even though I think she's doing just fine. It hurts more for me, knowing, like, Sabrina and, and Shawn are actually, like, not together, even though we know they weren't. But this works for my heart. Yeah, I don't mind these two. I know a lot of people dislike them. I think people think they're like a mismatch, but I don't mind them at all. And honestly, like when they broke up, I was like, oh, okay, single Sean Mendez era here for it. But he gave us a whole bunch of nothing. And the one thing he gave us, he took away in that interview. No, I'm not saying this, Sabrina. I hate yeah. her. So his single era like gives no energy. And so you know what? You might as well get back with the girl who like you've loved for, for five years. Yeah, I'm watching a video of Camilla like leaving the festival, walking around with her friends, and then she gets in Sean's car. Yeah, like they're together. Cute. Yeah, Cute. I, I don't, I don't hate this. Me neither. Are you ready for our next celebrity spotting at Coachella? Yes. Leo Nardo. Leo Nardo. I love Leo Nardo. He was so good in that movie about the boat. Leonardo DiCaprio has was spotted with Bradley Cooper's ex Irina Shake at Coachella. And the only reason this is shocking is because she's 37. Like him being spotted <laughs> out with a model. Okay, whatever, like who cares? Um a model who's a mother and is 37. I can't believe it. It Someone must be a misprint. Age appropriate. It must be a misprint. But isn't he not friends with Bradley? I don't know. You would think they would be, but now They're I, just like I, the same person, but yeah. that doesn't mean they're friends. Yeah, but also this looks like the sort of spotting where it's like they were standing next to each other. Right, and there's only like so many cool pockets of a party that like the cool, actually cool people can like stand in. Like it could be a real nothing burger, except it looks, mm, I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. I am like at a place in my life where like I genuinely don't care who Leonardo DiCaprio is dating. Like to me, he gave us Cami Marone and I'm so grateful. Did you watch Daisy Jones? No. Oh, she was just I'm sensational. Sure. Like, she was so... And I feel like, you know, I love that that he did that for us because now, you know, she's a star and that's what she deserves. But, like, beyond that, like, I don't care. You know, yeah. it's like, to me, I don't really know the difference between Irina Shayk, Gigi Hadid, like, all these girls he's been with. Like, they're just the same to me. Yeah. It's not, like, do something different. Like, date someone ugly, you know? <laughs> like, I just... If he could do something to surprise me, like, maybe then I'd start caring. But it's... It's, just re it's regurgitated. It's the same thing, uh, you know? It's also crazy that he's going to Coachella. Like, it's, it makes me sad. It's giving, like, Kyle Cook energy. Like, you're too old for this party. Literally. How old is Leo? That's good. 47, 50? He's something like that. How old is he? 48. Oh, no. Bradley's 48. That's a good... 48. Leo's 48. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Like, I do feel like at, at some point, you know, I'm all for ages, just a number, but, like, the party is over, you know? Yeah. 
oh no or like this party's over for you go to a different party yeah even vanessa hudgens wasn't at coachella this i know year. she had to work queen booked and busy but she's the queen of coachella but i did feel like this year in particular there was a lot i was like shocked by how many celebrities were at coachella oh really yeah Haley and justin kendall like i don't know i just felt like it was more than usual like a-listers huh i feel like it was pretty maybe since it got so big yeah. and like it was just so pervasive and everything and then it kind of got like a little lame for a second i feel like now it's just like quieted off and it was cool like people weren't doing the most the outfits from like the influencers and the celebrities were just like cool low key cool looks nothing crazy nothing stupid i did want to talk about though how like i felt like the landscape of like brands and influencers was really interesting this year because every year past it's very much been like the revolve show um and i think revolve had like a lot to prove this year after that whole thing that happened last year with revolve festival but i felt like revolve was like not really part of the narrative in terms of me just consuming other people's content, it wasn't like the place to be. I felt like guests really showed up. Like they had Alex Earl and they had all these cool, I think I'm um, Stoss, see baby. Like they had a really cool house with a lot of cool girls and guests was like every other, there was like a lot of other brands like doing the most and everybody stopped at Revolve, like almost as like a rite of passage on the way to the festival. But it didn't feel like it, it's felt in years past where it's like the only thing going on is Revolve and Revolve Festival. And if you're not there with Revolve, you're like irrelevant. Yeah. It felt like there was a lot of other cool brands like doing cooler things. Yeah. Or a lot of people who were just like sent to Coachella with to promote a certain brand mm -hmm. like the brand didn't activate or anything there but like I'm taking this sunscreen with me into yeah. Coachella and then their their whole stay and everything is just like sponsored by that brand which is cool too yeah yeah it just felt like everybody showed up like they're finally they took a note out of Revolve's book and like everybody started competing yeah it was cool yeah it was I, I enjoyed following it this weekend me too um, I saw some cute outfits yeah a lot of big pants that's the trend yeah no and I'm personally getting ready for stagecoach and I know the vibes are different but the aesthetic is overall like kind of like it's deserty it's bandana like there's some similarities I'm having so much trouble like are you gonna wear big pants because that's the trend like I actually bought a shirt today that was like I, I put it on it arrived today and I was like oh my god you know what I need big pants <laughs> But, like, I'm not a big pants girl, you know? No. It's like, it's the desert. Who wants to wear pants? No. No, I'm not a big pants girl. No, but, like, I, I literally need pants for this shirt. Or else I can't wear the shirt, you know? There's really... You have to show me. I will. There has to be another way. There's not. What do people do before big pants? I don't know. I don't know. And, like, where do you stand in this time and place in history if, if you physically can't wear big pants? That's a good question. Like, I don't know what would happen if I wore big pants, honestly. I'm not a big pants girl. No. Let's just put it that. I'll leave it at that. I feel like you have to be taller. Yes, you at do. At baseline, yep. you know? Where do we go from here? I don't know. We're being left behind. We definitely are. In the pants department. A hundred percent. Are you ready for our next story? Yes. I'm move some things around. Yeah. Um... Northwest is making headlines because she joined Katy Perry on stage in Las Vegas as her mom, Kim, watched from the audience. Kim took North and her friends to Katy Perry's show in Vegas, and they were having the time of their lives. And then Katy invited North on stage to dance, and North invited her friends on stage. Yeah. There's a lot to unpack from all the content on Katy's story. I didn't story. watch every single video, but oh, I, I, did. I saw most of it. I thought the whole thing was so cute and sweet and like not relatable because they like took a plane, but like just like a, taking, you know, your daughter and her friends to a concert. It's there's like, like an there's, you know? yeah, there's an element of relatability, yeah. not at the level they went, but it was cute and it was still like kind of normal of Kim. And then when Katie brought her on stage, I'm like, oh, that's cute. And then I watched the footage of Katie on stage and like Katie was just like doing the most for North, which was so nice. But if I was a patron of this <laughs> concert and like I paid money, I would be, like, it was a long time they had her on there. They like, made a TikTok. They all danced, and they brought the friends over. It wasn't just, like, everyone give it up for North. Like, it was, like, a long saga. It was, like, several stories that were all about 60 seconds. And if I was at the concert just to hear Katy Perry, like, I would have been annoyed. Like, yeah. it was a lot. It made me wonder if, like, in every concert she brings some kids up for, like, a kid segment. I don't think so. Okay, it could be. Like, context is key. It could mm -hmm. be in that, like, in this concert it was going to be, like, North and her friends because they were there. Um, but that was the exact thought I had when I saw it. I was like, this is so cool for North and her friends. But it's a lot. But if I was at this concert, I'm like, I'm same. leaving. Yeah. And Katie was like so cute and sweet with the girls. And like, she's obviously like really maternal. And like, we don't really ever see that side of her because she keeps her like mom life private. So it was very cool. And, and it was sweet. But it was just, um, it was a really long, you know, time for her to be up on that stage. Yeah. 
And when, when Katie brought North and she was like, do you want to make a TikTok with me? North is like, can my friends come up? It was so sweet. Like, North is a really sweet kid. Right. You forget she's just a, like a nine-year-old girl yeah, with and her like, friends. And I think I said this last week. I was talking to someone, one of the guests was about her. Like, I feel like a lot of us have like this preconceived notion of North in our head that she's probably like this diva monster just because she's the oldest and... I don't know. That's just like how I perceive her. And we her. follow Nori's black book. Yeah, yeah. I just perceive her as like being this spoiled brat. And every time I see her like speak, she's so sweet and soft spoken. She's just a kid. And she's like, can I bring my friends up? Like it was so cute and I was shocked. I don't know why. Yeah. That she's just a kid. We have yeah. her like in our heads. As uh, on this, this pedestal. Larger than life person. But 100%. she's nine. She's nine. But that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, also, Kim had recently taken like Saint and his friends to all Europe. around Europe to see soccer games like up close and F1 meet all the players they're like big soccer fans and it's just like where do you go from there uh, it's down you know what's yeah. like how do you impress them after that that's why I think I feel like the kids would be monsters right that's why but it seems like they really do appreciate it yeah and they looked at even the videos of like Sane and the and the soccer players like they were freaking out yeah no and when but how long did that last for when katie called oh is that northwest north was screaming and then when she said north do you want to come on stage it wasn't like she expected that she was <laughs> screaming all the girls were like jumping up it was so cute and it was really genuine shock yeah but i would have expected her to be like it's about time you know yeah or be like no maybe she'll get to a place where that's her reaction to these things right or she goes to a concert and she's like why aren't i on stage and then we got a lot of behind the scenes footage after the show where um sia came with them and paris hilton too it's kind of like this random crew it's so fun yeah and like if you had kids and you and the collective you and and money like kim does like that's what you would do and like what how can you curate a better time for your kid no it's so true it was really sweet but like there was an element of weirdness to it where i was like okay move on get on with the show yeah 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 it looked like a good show though yeah katie's um residency has been like pretty successful to the point where like no one talks about it do you know what i mean yeah it's not like on the level of adele where it's like everything she does is spoken about but it's not a flop she sells really good tickets and she's kind of like the perfect candidate for a residency because she weirdly is like in this like legend era like she's not releasing new music she probably couldn't if she really wanted to to the point where it would be like as successful as her old music but she has this insane catalog of music yeah she's she did, really i did see a headline she was talking about like touring after her residency maybe it's like a greatest hits tour i'd love to see her she's a queen and she's a very talented vocalist Yes, well, we know where she will be performing next because our next story, a little Coronation news. It's, it's Coronation, Coronation Day. Day. And Katy Perry and Lionel Richie will lead King Charles Cavalier Spaniel's Coronation concert. And here's who else is performing. So on Friday, the BBC announced the roster of performers gracing the stage at the Coronation concert on Sunday, May 7th. One wow, day. it's coming up. I feel I like we've been talking about it. Oh, and we, I didn't talk about it with anyone last week because like, I just like wasn't in the mood for royal news, but we can talk about it now, that Prince Harry is going and Meghan is not. Yeah, we'll talk about it uh, at some point in the story, I think. Um, the concert is one day after King Charles and Queen Camilla are crowned at Westminster Abbey. Lionel Richie, Katy Perry, and Andrea Bocelli wow. highlight the lineup, which also includes the British pop group Take That, plus UK talent Sir Bryn Terfel, Freya Ridings, and Alexis for French. So it's not like star-studded is what you'd say. Okay, yeah. but Globally. I would say those first three names are really good, really big. There's no it's not embarrassment here. Yes, and I then agree. He's having some local talent to highlight. I mean, why not highlight some of our national treasures? No, it's on true. the back of Katy Perry, Lionel Richie, and Andrea Bocelli for like the three main headliners, if you will. For not one of them to be British, like, is a little bit of a disgrace. Like the fact, and when you think about like the biggest stars in the world, like so many of them are British: Adele, Ellie Goulding, Harry Styles, like. There are so many. So the fact that none of them are either available or willing to do it, like, does give me pause. I can't lie. Yeah. Um, but this is not an embarrassing lineup. But when you look really into it and you notice that none of the three major people are British, like, it definitely is weird. Yeah. But we already, like, kind of crossed that. Bad. Like, we already had this conversation. Like, yes. those big stars, either they really are unavailable. We looked at their tour schedules. Like, Harry really couldn't, even if he wanted to, I think. Um, Adele just uh, extended her reg residency. Same. Um yeah Adele like could have done it yeah she didn't want to yeah she didn't want to but, and so there's a few like 
gaping no but you also have to reconcile the fact that like it's entirely possible like i don't really know the landscape of like british politics but it's entirely possible it's like when a certain celebrity doesn't want to perform for like one president's inauguration like it's a political thing yes and they might not be monarchists at their core right so we've accepted that yeah that the top tier of british British aristocracy talent is either booked and busy or anti anti and so now it was really just a question of who they would get and i i act i am feeling very relieved for charles that this is not embarrassing these are three a a a super a yeah andrea bocelli andrea bocelli like i think it's gonna be great i can't wait to watch yeah i think it's very interesting that both Katy perry and lionel richie are doing it together it makes me think they might have the same agent because like they're both on American Idol together Mm -hmm. and now they're both doing the carnation together and they're friends so like it's nice it adds like a nice little narrative um and I just like recently been loving Lionel Richie I feel like he was just in the Brooke Shields documentary I kind of am he's so great on American Idol he was just in the Brooke Shields documentary where he really came off looking so well and I don't know if it it wasn't the point of the documentary but she was at this point where she was talking about how like so many men in the industry like took advantage of her and sexualized her and then it's just Lionel Richie who is there as like a friend giving testimonials um talking about how he's known her since she was so young and they've always been really close and it just made him look even better because all the men in the in Brooke's story were like turning out to be villains like her husband and her whatever so I just love Lionel and then of course he's Sophia and Nicole's father which just adds like another element she's getting married like any day the Jewess I know she's converting you weren't here but I talked about it with Ben he was Mm -hmm. very excited because she was like so excited and proud and a lot of celebrity Jews are like so quiet about their faith um she's kind of like this timeless in terms of style like she's really this like elegant classic timeless queen and I think her wedding is going to be I think it's going to be like up there with like Nicola Peltz like I think it's going to be gorgeous because like she's obviously Hollywood royalty she's marrying someone who's like a business royalty you know I think it's going to be kind of like a next level affair yep I'm excited I am excited too are you ready for our fifth and final story oh my god no 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 I'm not somebody tell page six shit my fucking ipad okay sorry well, you asked me something i couldn't hear you are you ready for our fifth and final story only if it's the fifth and final story that's brought to you by game time buying tickets for your favorite events shouldn't be stressful game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports music comedy and theater near you with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll actually have i want to say i've seen so many people getting last minute like day of tickets to eras through game time with like really good seats game time is the place for last minute ticket deals forget planning months in advance because that's never been something i care to do game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event they get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football basketball baseball concerts comedy theater more the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference so with the fastest growing ticket app in the country for a reason you'll get images of your seats before you buy you know exactly what to expect when you arrive and you can buy tickets in a, ma- a matter of seconds two taps and you're set the tickets are sent directly to your phone you'll never have to dig through your email snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use code toast for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again just create an account and redeem with code toast for $20 off you just have to download the app it's game time g-a-m-e-t-i-m-e create that account and use code toast you'll get $20 off your first purchase that's code toast t-o-a-s-t today's episode is also brought to you by squarespace all right if you work in e-commerce you have a side hustle you want to work in e-commerce from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business so Whether you're starting a website for a podcast you want to start or a blog or you work in education, there's so many different features on Squarespace's websites that really help you get it all done. And you don't have to be a professional. You do not have to have like a backware in software engineering. I have made many websites over my time and I have used Squarespace and I can tell you your website comes out looking fabulous and it is so easy. So if you're looking to sell stuff in terms of e-commerce, Squarespace is everything to sell anything. They have the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and security your payments whatever you sell Squarespace has merchandising features to make your products look their best online they offer um, traffic overview so you'll get insights into how your visits unique visitors and page views are trending you can gain insight into the top traffic sources product device types browsers operating systems you'll get like a really really detailed um, over overview of 
what's working and what's not working. And, you know, you got to lean into the data. We're constantly leaning into the data here at The Toast. Also, what I love about Squarespace is their content ownership. So you are owning all the content that you put on the Squarespace platform. They offer a one-click data portability. So check out squarespace.com slash toast for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code toast. You'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash toast for a free trial. And once you're ready to launch, use the offer code toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. Are you ready for our story now? Oh, you sound serious. I was going to, like, I don't know, make a joke about oh. Squarespace and... Go, please, by uh, all means. Like, maybe, like, having, being, like, a, a small business mambo. Something love, like that. love, love, I love. Don't know. I prefer a big business mambo, if I'm being <laughs> honest, though. <laughs> That's why I just moved on. Yeah, it, no, it's it, good. It wasn't fully formed. That's fine. We worked through it. Our fifth and final story, Raquel Levis is entering voluntary facility for mental health counseling. People has confirmed she is treating, seeking treatment for her mental health more than a month after the news of Scandival broke. Um, she entered a program in Arizona, a plan that her rep says she's been considering for some time. Quote, uh, the rep said, quote, Raquel and her family decided before the relationship was discovered that she would enter a voluntary facility for mental health counseling. She was scheduled to go in pre-reunion, but decided she wanted to finish her filming commitment. Bravo and production were aware and in support of her journey towards better mental health. Her rep confirmed she is not there for rehab, but rather a program focused on mental health and trauma therapy. I um, am literally not surprised by this. I, don't, I think like any human being who had to deal with, Ra what, with what Raquel had to deal with, through her own actions, of course, um, would be having a mental health crisis. I wouldn't be surprised if she was having like a full blown fucking mental breakdown. But I did also hear she went to Miraval, like Canyon, Canyon Ranch. Well, the statement is a little confusing because it says that she decided that she was going before the relationship was discovered. So she's going to mm. mental health facility, not because of everything that's happened with Scandaval. Because okay. I would agree with you. When right. you go through this, like it is very taxing traumatizing and traumatizing. So. They're saying she's always planned on going oh. and it's not because of the fallout, but maybe like she, maybe she engaged with Tom in the way that she did because of she, the crisis. mental health issues that she has. Yeah. It's very PR spin. Yeah. But I don't want to doubt like what she might have been going through, what's maybe happened to her. I'm kind of like a wait and see sort of person, but so far this seems like, you know, the steps that you take in your road to a comeback. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I sp I think also just having conversations last week with Paige and Hannah, who are both reality stars, we had to deal with like their own share of like backlash. backlash, which was on a much smaller scale. I felt like when we were talking about it, they both had like a lot of sympathy for Raquel, and my, like, and not in any way that I'm not Team Ariana, but like I do find myself really feeling for Raquel in a way that like I I don't have those feelings for Tom, like not even in the slightest. Like to me everything that's happening to Tom is like a direct result of him just being really like a terrible human being for 10 years. Like I don't, I don't know. I don't feel sympathetic towards him. I do feel like, like maybe it's because everyone's really coming for Raquel really hard. A lot of the girls on the cast too, like this whole Rachel thing, they're just like really coming for Raquel more so than they're coming for Tom. And I don't know. I just like feel I'm st like, and I, I don't want this to be taken out of context. Cause like I'm very much team Ariana, but like, I'm human and like I, I like feel bad for Raquel like yeah. she obviously fucked up she's obviously like a person who's clearly dealing with some sort of crisis because she you know finds Tom Sandoval attractive and that's obviously the uh, first sign of mental illness um <laughs> but I don't know I feel real like I'm starting to, like I feel really bad for her I agree I mean we said this like throughout Scandaball as much as like the tea is hot and and it's a crazy thing that happened like she's a person right and a human being is not meant to withstand this amount of criticism on this volume and it's this gotten to time. such a crazy and it's level really, like it's her personal life it's her professional life like she's been wiped out yeah and, and it's like everyone even like the base suitcases did you see that thing Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they got in on the drama. It's like, she can't even leave her house with a purse without the company of the purse saying, <laughs> we hate you. Here's a full suit of suitcases to Ariana. It's like, oh, my God. It's just a lot. Like, and I know she had an affair, and I know she's wrong in this. And, like, I get, and uh, two things can be true. Like, I, I can reconcile both. And I'm just like, I don't know. It, it feels like it's crossed a line, honestly. Yeah. It's, it's the volume is, is really crazy. But, and, and so I would understand if she was going away to take time right. from all of this and just like focus on herself. But that's not what they said. Like yeah. they're saying it's regar irregardless of Scandaval, she was going to a facility. No. And I had read online that the facility, which they said was in Arizona is Miraval, which is not like a mental health facility. It's like a spa. 
Time off is time off. I agree, I agree. But like I do feel like if that's the case, then that statement is like intentionally misleading and and I think the statement is intentionally yeah. misleading. I think a lot of it is um spin and PR and, and as I said, like the things that you do in order to come back from something. But I also think she's really going through something. So you know, I mean, how could she not? be true that mental health counseling would be good for her image and good for her mental health. Right, right. So true. I just honestly, um, like I'm just I on it like now I'm at the point where every Everything that's coming out is like giving me the ick. It's not like, yeah, yeah. Stuff against Tom, I'm still, yeah, yeah. But the Raquel stuff, I don't know. I just feel like, I know this sounds crazy. I just feel like <laughs> like she had an affair with Tom against her will. Like, I know that sounds crazy. I I feel like she's not a person who can like really like control her decisions. I know, I just, I'm, I'm seeing it. Well, her original statement said that she's like addicted to love and attention. And like maybe she was clearly at, at a low point in her life this mm-hmm. season and like, drinking and just feeling so lonely and she's cl- susceptible but she is responsible of for course, her actions of but i also think like people can like do bad things and still be within good people. reason you know irena being mean to zach right and okay so you did it right now what now what we don't have to you know hang you put your head on a spike i know i know and it gets to the point where it's like Okay, it's a little too much now. Yeah. And Ariana's living her life. Like, she's out at Coachella. She was spotted making out with this hot guy. Like, good, good. And I'm not saying that she's not the victim. She 100% is. But, like, I do think it's gone to, like, a little bit of a crazy place. Yeah, I think so, too. And I just I, I just think everything is fluid, you know? Okay, yeah. so it's done. So it's in it. What now? Yeah. Like, yeah. doesn't mean – and I also think the people who, like, take all this stuff, like – off the internet, off the show, do things in real life, do things in Instagram comments. It's like, n- there's no need for that. Yeah. You know, like we could talk, like it, it's gossip and it's entertainment and they're it's on a fun. show and, and it's all fodder. And so we're like a living for yeah. it. But I don't go comment on Raquel's no. Instagram. No, 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 no. You know, I don't show up at Tom Tom. No, 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 no. Ta- no. I mean, Schwartz and Sandy's. Or Tom Tom. Or either of them. Right. You know, I, I just, I move on. Right, right. And so. I think people like need to have be able to separate that the like two. this isn't your life. Y- yeah. Yeah. Um okay, well those are the fast 5. Do you want to talk about Succession? I didn't watch Succession, but I did want to do like a little content recap, okay. all sorts of mediums, yeah. if that's okay, because I did a lot of reading. I finally read that little mini Jessica Simpson. Oh yeah, she story, released like an addendum, which by the way, everyone should read because it's 28 pages and it counts towards your Goodreads goal. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so cute. I read it in 30 minutes because it's 28 pages. Yeah. And it was just like this. Silly. I don't know why this was written, but it was fun to go back to her. Is it fictional or it's just like no, a story about a her tr- life? It's one more like story about her life. It's not fictional, but it's about like a movie star who is unnamed. But I remember like reading rumors that it was Mark Wahlberg. Oh, okay. But I need to like now go and cross reference everything. And she did give a lot of clues. Like I feel like someone could figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I feel like not enough people cared. That's a thing. Yeah, or they just settle, or maybe I just don't know where to look, right, you know, because right. like a mag- People magazine isn't going to be like, right. it's this person that's right. slanderous, because he's like cheating on someone. Uh-huh. Um, and it was really cute, and I love our girl. It was fun to go back into the world of open book for 30 minutes. It's such a good book. And then I read Paris Hilton's memoir. Oh, yeah. Paris, the memoir. And it was so good. And really? I read it in like two days, and I just like kept wanting to keep reading it, Um it was really well written while also being so true to Paris. I didn't realize her having like ADHD is such, it's like one of the big themes of the book and something mm. that like runs through it. And like the way that, and she didn't, wasn't diagnosed until she was in her 20s. So like in her childhood, it's like she was constantly acting out, constantly seeking adrenaline, they didn't couldn't know. sit still, couldn't focus. And so she like found all these different avenues to like channel her energy, which were oftentimes like the wrong places. Of course. You know, for a 15 year old to go to the club, but she mm. just loved the lights and the mm. music and like that her brain is like, it's addicted Needed that to that stimulation. It. And so that was like a really big theme. And I also feel like in reading someone's book and, and this in particular, like I could really understand her and like why she is always DJing. Like, and you would think like someone oh, doesn't yeah. want to be in the clubs forever, but like the way that the music is like it it, it, it like speaks to her brain yeah. and it's not something I feel like oftentimes when we talk about celebrities we try to like get inside their head and be like well maybe she's the type of her and that's why I like reading celebrity memoirs because now like I get it yeah so it was a really great perspective on Paris it was a lot about the like uh Provo right EGS schools that she had went to if I hadn't seen her documentary um I would have been like floored by right. this book there are a lot more details in the book than there were in the documentary, but I, I could feel, you know, what was you coming. You had context. Because I had context. Um, and it, w- it was really, really good also. What's like, like a big bombshell? 
Ooh. Or like, did she mention other celebrities? Oh yeah, tons. She talks about Britney a lot. They're really they're oh. real friends. Oh nice. Um, she like talked about the moment in the car with like Britney and Lindsay, like how they all wound up sitting in like uh-huh. in the front seats together, and it was like so not planned. meant to be or, iconic. Yeah, like and Lindsay like was shouldn't have been getting in the car. Right. Like, she didn't fit. It was right. a two seater. <laughs> Um, but how, cause sometimes she would like go down a rabbit hole of like something dark and she'd be like, my brain doesn't want to go here. Let me think about something good. And she'd like flip through stories and she'd then start, start telling like a random, fu- like uh-huh. the, the book really operated in the same way that her, her brain. brain does a lot of run on sentences, which she said, like, that's how I think. And that's how I talk. And it took a second to get used to, yeah. but then like it, whoever she worked with on writing, cause I'm sure like she had help. They really captured her spirit. That's the thing. And I think she's so spirited. I think a lot of celebrity memoirs and the best celebrity memoirs, I, it's everyone works with a writer that doesn't take away from the validity of it, whether it's like a ghostwriter or it's on, you know, written with, um, but when you can really hear the person's voice reading it to you, that's in my opinion, like a successful celebrity memoir. That's honestly why I did not like Mariah Carey's. Like it was so sophisticated and dense. And this is how that bitch talks. Like we've yeah. heard her talk. She's hilarious. Like, yeah. No, it was very dense. It was so not like Mariah was reading it to me. And like Jessica Simpson, and I heard in Andy Cohen's books, it's so Andy. Like when you can hear their voice come through, I love that. Yes. Agreed. Mariah's book was good, though, because it was an amazing story. Yes. But the writing w- is kind of is not what you would expect. Didn't sound like her. Um, I gave the book five stars, mm. m- met all memoir car- criteria and celebrity memoir criteria from oh, me. Um, there was just, like, interesting factoids and nuggets in there, you know. But nothing, like, so crazy crazy that I, I had never heard a, a lick of but I felt like I understood her childhood better because it felt like whenever she talks about her childhood it's like did they live in New York or they lived in LA how is she friends with Nicole and Kim right. and, but she they lived at the Waldorf right and the all the jumping around is like thoroughly explained and then she and and I really and is their connection to the Hilton Hotel franchise explained yeah they okay. her great grandfather is Conrad Hilton who started Hilton Hotel but they don't own it um no uh they're I think not they're still involved, but, but that's like not what her dad does. Right, right. He's like a real estate type. Yeah, but she said like the most I will ever benefit from the Hilton name, considering Conrad do- donated most of his fortune to charity, mm-hmm. which like was known. Um, she said the most I benefit from the name is that I'm now in Hilton commercials. Right. So now it looks like she's actually like a founder of the company because she works every time she goes on her honeymoon was sponsored by Hilton, and it's very smart of Hilton to you know capitalize on literally somebody with the last name, but it makes it confusing. Yeah. But she like talks about like a lot of the stories behind the iconic moments, like the picture with Dave LaChapelle in her grandparents' house giving the yes, finger, like yes. how all of that came, came to, to be, be and. And then you go and Google the picture, and it's like, wow, it's Those all right the there. Best type of books when like yeah. you end up Googling. Sometimes she'll be like, Google this. Oh, I she'll love like, that. I, she was like, I love jumping over fences. I've been doing it at my grandparents' house since I was little. Like, I'll do it to get out of any situation. She was like, Google Daily Mail, two thousand seven, like jumping out. Like, oh, by the way, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you really kind of want to read it. You should read it. I feel like it's a good beach read. Yeah. Maybe like if somebody could take me to a beach. I'll go. But there, there was like a lot of traumatic experiences. Yeah. So a trigger warning, I don't want to like give too much away, but um, she's just a great, wonderful woman, powerful okay, woman. Okay, good. I read two, Nothing Crazy. Um, I'm reading One of Us is Dead. Have you heard of it? No. Just like a, like rich women in Atlanta. And I guess one of them is dead. I don't know who yet, and I'm still 50% Wh- in. Oh, whoa. Yeah, I know. Um, it's like, you know, rich politics, buckhead. It's good. I started a new book last night. I think I'm only 6% in, but the first 6%, it's giving Luckiest Girl Alive. It's giving Ani. Oh, uh, what's it uh, called? It's called The Social Climber. Oh, uh, was it about me? <laughs> um, I don't know what happens in the book, but it's like, you know, a very ambitious, cutthroat almost let me know if wed. I should read it I will but so far I'm like it, the, it, the tone of it is reminding me of Ani and then I read this book called by Abby Jimenez called yours truly which is the sequel it's like a really good book that I liked called part of your world and I'm here to tell you like please don't read it it was like really truly horrible great yeah and then I read a book that I don't remember the name I think it's it must called have been really good you must remember this mm. I don't know how it ended up on my want to read but I was like I could go for you know a nameless thriller and not for me. Mm. I'm not for me. Oh, I watched the first three episodes of the final season of Maisel. It's pretty good. I like. Uh, I don't know why I watch it. I just like it, and nobody watches it. And it's crazy how it was literally the show with the most fanfare of all time. Like w- swept every award show for two years in a row. And I think people literally forget that it's still on. But it's the final season, and it's pretty good. Um, and I watched. I watched the first five out of six episodes of Belgravia. 
<laughs> which is Julian Fellows of Downton Abbey. Oh. And it's so good so far, but it's only six episodes, and I don't think there's a second season, so, like... Why waste your time? No, no, like, I'm sad. Yeah. But no, sad. I'm glad to have had my time with Belgravia. Do we ever get a second season of Gilded Age? No, but it's coming. Oh, okay. Um, so that's the TV recap, that's the content recap, and that's our show, correct? That's our show. <sighs> I feel good. I feel like we got it all out. Thank you guys we so much. said what we needed to say. I it's said. been said. It's been said. And that's really all you can hope for at the end of a podcast. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and at the end of a how long? An hour and 30 minutes. Oh, so shit. the car's about to run out. Perfect timing. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast of the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts anywhere podcasts can be found. So at Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, I have Radio Castbox, all the places where you listen to podcasts, find us at Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have an amazing Monday, and we'll see you tomorrow for Love Tuesday. Ya. Love you. Bye. Bye.